You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hi, I'm Sabrina. And I'm Marva. And we are the hosts of Sistery Untold. Katie and Nathan asked us here just to say that they swear more than a harlot in an 18th century brothel. So brace yourselves because Queen's podcast is always a wild ride. If you want to know more about 18th century harlots or any other cool women in history, then listen to Sistery Untold. Where we look at history through the eyes of sisterhood. Cheers, Cheers, queens! Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about badass women in history. Nathan. What the hell? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Patricia. Oh, uh, she went there. And she that's, did it. She hello, did ladies it. and gentlemen. That is who we're talking about today. Thank you and good night. Da, yes. da, 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 da. <laughs> and let's get in our way back machine and go back to the ancient world. I love how we like flash forward. <laughs> how do we rewind back? <laughs> yes, Perfect. exactly. <laughs> Nailed it. Nathan, who are we talking about today? Hi, Patia. So she was an ancient mathematician, a philosopher, and all around pretty oppressive person. Yeah. And uh, before we get started, obviously, we got to do our Patreon shout outs. <laughs> so thank you, Elise, Katie, and Paige. And thank you to Amanda, Ava, and Trudy. Nathan, tell us about this cocktail, which I am already started enjoying. I like this one a lot. So, this is a rosé wine spritzer, and um, on the Booze Clues episode, I neglected the cranberry vodka. So, I will give us the recipe with the cranberry vodka, because Katie wanted to get crunk. So, no, I just (laughs) had cranberry vodka at the house. You know what? Let's get crunk. Fuck it. (laughs) Fuck it. So, I made my own berry uh, simple syrup. So, I took a frozen bag of berries, boiled it. I'm going to boil the (laughs) berries. And I put some stevia in it because I need my basic bitch yoga pants on. Um, but I, I did that all together, boiled it for 30 minutes, and then strained that into about one ounce. And then used that to put into some club soda. And then mix it with some rosé wine and some cranberry vodka, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> well, this is delicious. It is... It is um, very delicious. It is very delicious. <laughs> Clink! I love how you gave the sound effect when the sound effect well, while, happened. The, while it's happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm meta like that. I don't know what to tell you. Let's talk about Hypatia. It's been a minute since we've done ancient history. I know. Remember, we did that Agrippina, like the two Agrippinas mm-hmm. back to back. And then after that, I think we were a little done with ancient history. But that was like two years ago, so. We are revisiting. Revisiting. Hypatia is one of those uh, fun stories where we don't know when she was born. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, but we haven't known when bitches were born before, but mm-hmm. it was like five or six years, seven or eight years. Right. But what is what is going on with Hypatia? Yeah, here? she was born sometime between 350 AD and 370 AD. That's, that's a several decades. Yes, that is a big gap. Uh, probably the biggest gap we've ever seen. I know. Though, well, you're either one or you're 21. Yes, yes. <laughs> Saida Alhura, I feel like the two guesses on hers were a pretty big gap, but uh-huh. not quite as this big, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, some people, like, I feel like more people lean into the 350 date because, like, when she died, she was considered, quote, unquote, old. Mm-hmm. But also, what is old in the 4th century? Uh, 17. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's ancient. She's walking with a walk up. <laughs> but we do know where she was born. So she was born and lived her entire life in Alexandria, Egypt. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting Cleopatra. Getting some um, Cleopatra vibes here, <laughs> yes. She wasn't, like, she was born into, like, the upper class, but not into, like, high society. Like, 
Like, her dad wasn't, her family wasn't, like, running the government or anything. Exactly. Which meant she was probably more or less Greek um, in her education, ethnicity, upbringing, culture, everything. Right. I have seen some people, like, argue about what her race would have been. I'm more inclined to think that she's probably, like, Cleopatra. Like, most likely... Uh mostly greek ethnicity but we have no idea who her mom was so i mean it's royalty at the time why did they burn down the library of oh, alexandria god. oh god we would have known all of this so royal history more. royal history would be changed there's a movie that i watched last week whenever i was researching this agora so there's this movie called agora with rachel weiss where who so fucking pretty. Uh, How is one person allowed to be so pretty? It's a very annoying. I don't know. Um, Why don't you ask me? <laughs> Nathan, please tell me. How did you accomplish this? <laughs> but no, in this movie, um, Agora, they see they say basically that the Alexandria Library burnt down during Hypatia's life. And that is a common uh, misconception. There was like a fire and like some damage done to a college in uh, Alexandria during her lifetime, but the actual library of Alexandria that we think of... Was burned before Way, that. way before. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, like we said... Anyway, back to her being Greek. Um, like we said in the Cleopatra episode, during Alexander the Great's time ruling, the Greeks kind of took over Egypt, so a lot of the upper class were... Greek. And then Rome took over at the end of our Cleopatra episode... And at this point, Rome had been running Egypt for like three or four hundred years. It's three hundred years after Cleopatra and Alexandria is a very mixed population of like Greek, Roman, realness, and Egyptians mm-hmm. just all mixed together. And that's really an incredibly dynamic world. Yeah. And that's what Hypatia was born to. Yeah, she was born into like Alexandria was like this hub of culture and learning because it was a big trading port like it was really it was a really important port and so like <laughs> the direct quote yes yep. <laughs> and so people were always coming and going so that means people with like different ways of thinking were always coming and going so it was like just, culture it was a huge culture hub exactly london yeah. new york paris exactly my port is important yes exactly <laughs> so there's there's Alexandria, you mm-hmm. know, like the ancient world right. port of importance. Yes. <laughs> Something we should point out is that the Roman Empire at this point, it like, ain't what it used to be. Yeah, what and it used, used to, to be. be. <laughs> Nathan, do you remember when we talked about Zenobia? Yes. And how like the Roman Empire was already kind of in decline mm-hmm. during her reign? Like she was all, all, all like close to taking them down. This is 100 years later. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Same time so, era. Right. So it's like the fall of the Western Roman Empire, which is what most people consider like the Roman Empire, is in, is in like 150 years after mm-hmm. um, Hypatia's birth. So, yeah, it's on. It's on. Down, Dear God. Down, so uh, but one big change to the empire that happened about 100 years before Hypatia, the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great made the Christian church the official church of the Roman Empire. BFD. 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 (laughs) Big shift from the prosecution of Christians that Rome was not into long before. Yeah, like, right before Constantine, they were still literally... We've all, well, not all of us, but, like, if you grew up in a Christian society, you've heard the stories about how they would put, like, the Christians, feed them to the lions and stuff yeah. like this. So now for it to be the official religion, things have changed. Also, we should do a Patreon episode on Constantine the Great because he was not, he, he boiled his wife alive. Not so great. Not. <laughs> Constantine, not, not the Not great. the great husband. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That is the official title. <laughs> so being Christian wasn't necessarily like the law. It was the official religion of the empire, but yeah. you could still practice whatever religion you wanted, more or less. I wonder how that's gonna work out. 
I don't know. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but we don't know anything about her mother, mm-hmm. which reminds me a lot of Cleopatra. It keeps giving me notes of Cleopatra. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's the same sort of vibe. Um, but what we do know who her dad was. Her dad was named Theon of Alexandria. Yeah, it's pronounced Theon, but it looks in writing... Like Theon, right? In Game of Thrones, like theme. yes, it always makes it's. I always giggle at like the random things in history that George R. R. Martin like pulled inspiration. Well, from. I mean, yeah. doesn't it makes total sense to make a fantasy novel out of history? Yes, yes, absolutely. who had dragons? Uh, Anne Boleyn, absolutely. <laughs> in the new Queen's podcast novel, Anne Boleyn, the Dragon Tamer. Um, <laughs> But Theon was a very respected teacher, mathematician, and philosopher. While the whole notion of feminism as we know it, like, it didn't exist back then. Yeah. So her dad taught at the Platonic School, which is the teachings of Plato. Plato was more female-friendly. Yeah than some other dudes. Theon, or Theon, whatever, was, whatever, <laughs> was the head of a school that taught Platonic teachings, which is the teachings of Plato. It was like uh, Neo-Platoism or so something like that. Platonic means Plato. Yeah, I don't really <laughs> know how we've gotten like the modern day Platonic out of, but yes, yes. Okay. Um While the notion of feminism, as we know it today, certainly didn't exist back then, Plato's teaching were surprisingly pro-female. Well, they weren't anti-woman. Yes, like compared to Aristotle or something, where it's just like, women are assholes, beat them and push them around because they're inferior. Plato, like, actually believed that the soul had no sex, so that, like, in a, men and women should be able to work along each other um yeah which for the time was progressive come on (laughs) plato but yeah that was radical at the time and so that's very lucky for hypatia having a dad that teaches that pretty prestigious gig for her dad that she had Mm -hmm. so similar to today if he were like the dean of like cambridge yale you know Good gig to Princeton, have. Princeton. Yeah. Like, it's a good gig to have. Respected scholar, teacher. Exactly. So, if Hypatia had any siblings, not well documented yeah. at all. Uh, if she did, she was the only one that mattered. Aww. Aww. <laughs> now, some people believe that she may have had a brother that died young because mm. one of her dads, um, her dad tr- did like a translation and dedicated it to like a dear son. Uh, but later historians were like, actually, the way that he worded it, it could be just, like, to his students or something like that. Uh, so she may have had a brother, but he didn't make it very long. Oh. But what is most likely known is that Hypatia grew up, and it was her and her dad for, like, most of her formative years. Right. And from what little we know about her upbringing, it leads me to believe that Theon was Pretty progressive. Pretty, pretty, progressive. <laughs> pretty progressive. Yeah. So he was very into science and education and mathematics. He was a very pragmatic dude. And he was like, my kids are going to be super, super educated. And then people were like, but your only kid is a daughter. And he's like, did I fucking stutter? Um, no. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, Hypatia's upbringing was all about learning, thinking, philosophy, and dad was really proud that she turned out to be really smart at a super young age. Right. Like, she's a child prodigy. She, she, yeah, she literally was brilliant. Yeah. Which also, we talk about this a lot in this podcast, nature versus nurture, like, people are like, a women's brains can't handle education, and then you look at the ones that are well-educated. And you're like, oh yeah, they can. Oh, oh, oh think of that. Oh, Oh, a little yeah. estrogen brings life. Right. <laughs> I feel like we do need to make a note about, like, the hierarchy of society at the time. Mm-hmm. Just like now, um, back then, it probably won't come as a surprise to anybody that higher education was a privilege for the upper classes, mostly. Yeah. Not to say that 
now, now you probably have a better chance of, if you want a higher education, getting it. But back then, it was a little bit um, gatekept, almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's nothing that, like, specifically calls out that she was a rich bitch. Right. Like, but she was, pro- they, they were comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. If her dad was able to live a life dedicated to learning and thinking, that meant that he wasn't having to spend 12 hours a day in the fields. So... Win. Win. That is so, a yeah. Win. So, they were, they were comfortable. They exactly. had some connection. Yes. <laughs> like, it's all a little bit hazy, <laughs> as ancient history often is. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it looks like she was sent to Athens to really, like... Brushing up on her education. Finish it all up, yeah. Her finishing school. Yeah. (laughs) It shows a level of progressive, again, on her father. Yeah. Like, same sort of thing. To put all that money and effort into educating a girl. A girl. But she's got some ovaries. How is she going to handle all this information and ovaries at the same time? Because she has a brain. (laughs) And there's blood pumping to the brain. Yeah. But also, she has a level of bravery on her point, I would think, to like go away from your home. Because, I mean, by modern day, it's a five hour flight from Mm -hmm. Alexandria to Athens. But back then, I mean, it's a. It's quite a way to go. It's a couple of weeks' <laughs> journey, and there's pirates and, and shit. And I would walk 5,000 miles for an education. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. I, I, would. Would. I don't know. <laughs> this is why no one's ever going to be making a podcast about me <laughs> in 500 years. No one's ever going to be like, oh, the bravery. Because I would be like, ooh. <laughs> the bravery. Is there a Wi-Fi? No? <laughs> I am staying home. Opting out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that took some balls to go... For the sake of education. Yes. It would be like two or three weeks on a boat, like sitting there. No Wi Fi, no Netflix. No, thank you. (laughs) No, thank Mm -mm. you. (laughs) Okay, so she's back in Alexandria and she's like, look, I've had all this education. I have blown every teacher I have out of the water. I didn't just blow every teacher. No, blew them out of the water. water. Yes. (laughs) Not trying to be cocky here, but look, I know I'm exceptional. Look, not trying to be full of myself or anything, but... (laughs) Can I have a job? I'm like, come on. I need a job. pretty remarkable. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, so her dad gives her a job at the school. And was that a bit of nepotism? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But also, she was legit. Like, she had gained a reputation at this point. She's smart. It's just like, she's she's almost a bit of a novelty. She is this mm. crazy smart woman <sighs> who, like, men, great thinkers, all these men are, uh, like, coming from, like, the corners of the world to talk to her. I have it's a feeling like, I know where this is going to go. What? <laughs> yeah, her dad is in charge. But also, people legit want to hear from her as yeah. well. But she became, she ended up surpassing her dad. Well, I think she surpassed her dad because she had that certain, like, je ne sais quoi. She definitely had she that. She had that, that, like, it factor. I don't know what it is about you. You were, she was so, people were so, so drawn to her. Because some people can be brilliant, but put them in front of a microphone and a bunch of oh. people to speak to, and it's, um. Ratchet. I think, I think <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, like, he's probably oh, yeah. a brilliant mind. But have you ever heard him speak? He's like, these are my human words. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's so true. <laughs> but for her to be a brilliant mind and also charismatic, like, people were so, so drawn to her. Her classes filled up. Mm-hmm. Like, beginning semester, nobody skipped class. Everyone wanted to hear what she had to say every day. And not long into starting a job, hers was the class Everyone wanted to take. Everyone, yeah. And it didn't matter she was a woman. In fact, that was part of the draw yeah. to her. Like, wow, this woman who is brilliant can teach a class? She does brain thoughts? How can she do How that? How can she do it? It's a miracle. Was it sexist? Yes. But it was also pretty progressive for the ancient world. But who did she teach? She taught math to honestly anyone that would listen and like i 
Mm. Katie doesn't do math. <laughs> I'm very good at knowing how much 20% something off of something is at the mall. But besides that, <laughs> it's just not my jam. So I... Like, I don't really necessarily want to go into, like, what theories, mathematical theories she was teaching. But it must have <laughs> If it been... was percentages, kitties. Okay, I'll get a little bit. <laughs> but no, people were sending their sons to learn from her from all corners of the world. And that is so awesome. And to answer your question, who did she teach? Mostly rich young men. Surprise. But... Rich young men from different faiths and different countries. Okay, that's a little different. Hypatia herself, and we'll get into it a little bit later, is um, of the pagan religions. But she did not discriminate. She was like, send your Jewish, Christian, whatever. I don't care about their religion. Like, we need to get together and talk about it. And that's only going to make things better. And many of her students would go on to be powerful dudes like bishops and prefects and people that are like running the government and so she shaped the mind yeah she was one of those teachers that you kept in contact with later to be like hey thank you for teaching me all that shit absolutely so she not only shaped the minds of the future, she, like, kept in contact with them, too. Yeah. She <laughs> would, like, a lot of people are going to go on to rely on her for advice once they get into these mm. powerful roles. There's this one guy named Orestes that we're going to talk about a little bit later that was one of her students. And her and Orestes were besties. Orestes the bestie. Orestes the bestie. Okay, I love this journey for him. I do too. <laughs> In that movie, uh, Orestes is played by, is it Oscar Isaac or Isaac? Oh, I think it's Oscar Isaac. He has first names for both They're names. Both, but do you know who I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I do. He is so handsome. Oh my God. Goodness, so what a good-looking fella he is. Call me later. So, back to school, mm-hmm. because she did not only teach math. No, 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 no. because being the first female mathematician, not enough for my bitch. Um, she also taught astronomy. Yes, queen. And <laughs> philosophy. Yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But what I've read about her works in astronomy is she actually took previous texts and dumbed them down so they would be more accessible to the people. That's really cool. Like She was like, I get it because I'm a brilliant mind, but you dummies aren't going to be able to get this. So let me try to make it more accessible. Yeah, I think that's so cool. And obviously by layman, we mean still like, Incredibly highly educated. Could read. Right. <laughs> but she recognized like it's too complicated for everybody to understand. Whatever. Right. I think that's really cool. And her translations were used widely and credited later by astronomers to help them understand what the solar system was, you know, like, oh, the world is round. Oh, thank you for dumbing it down for us dummies over here. <laughs> She was doing such great PR for the college that she taught at that they gave her this thing called a tribun. And a tribun is like a specific robe or cloak that only professors, only highly, highly, Um, highly educated people. Like, you know, whenever people graduate with honors and they get those fancy little mantles or Dolls or whatever, yeah. It's like that, but you wear it in your day-to-day. I would wear that every day that I walked into a room, like, I've got my doctorate. Like, look at me. Look at me. (laughs) Yes. It's basically like like, a card-carrying educated person. And she's the only woman at this time to get that and she would wear it like out and about and it like drew attention to her yeah i mean she's picking up groceries and she's smart yeah (gasps) (laughs) like she's just at the market with her tribe on and people are like 
is that your husband's tribe in? And she's like, like no, no, bitch. And it's it mine. my tribe in. <laughs> and they're like, tell me more, tell me more. So this actually opens her up to the population outside of the scholastic world. Like, mm-hmm. just a regular Joe Smo could be at the market and be like, wait, what? And we have to assume that enough people came up to her asking about where she just got fed up and like how did she just she's like fine fine ever i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm wear gonna, this gown <laughs> i'm gonna teach the masses she started doing impromptu lectures mm-hmm. like to anyone that would listen but like she wanted to share philosophy mathematics astronomy with everybody and like we were saying it was so gate kept before that mm-hmm. to just be information that the upper class knew and that was by design that was well not because on. you had privilege because they gave you privilege. yes and so the fact that she was just going out like coming home from the market and being like all right gather around who wants to talk about smart people shit and like a whole crowd of people would be like like peasants or whatever like enslaved people whoever would come up and be like we want to hear about smart people shit and she would lay it down in a way that they could understand hopefully ish. i mean ish <laughs> um, i'm sure there are some people that it went over their head but like god bless her for trying you know i like, mean right i think that is a i think it's kind of beautiful like that mean, she tried to like open education up to the masses you know that's how it should be that's how it should be her reputation Far and wide. It was mostly positive. Yes, she's smart. She's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't get out of bed for less than $10,000. That is also true. <laughs> it said that she had many, many men that were in love with her. And I don't, I'm kind of in love with her, so like, I'm I mean, hold on. But I don't think she was interested in sex at all. I don't either. Like, So let's talk about her sex life, or at least what we know. Again, this is just shit that's documented. We don't know 100% what went on behind the scenes, but she never married. And there's nothing left behind that suggests that she had any love interests. I mean, she had fanboys. She had She had like, fanboys of oh, plenty. She had groupies. She had so many groupies. Like, and if she could if she wanted to be married, she could have been. She would have been married. Yeah. But if she, she wanted not. to have an affair, she would have had an affair. Like, she could have had any man she wanted. Pretty sure if we could classify her, she'd be, like, asexual. Probably. Unless there's just, like, a piece of history that we don't you know You know about. what? She just really gets off on math. Good for her. Somebody's gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who makes rocket ships? Uh, Hypatia. Yeah. 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 Unless there's some very, very well kept secrets, it just seems like, yeah, like you said, she may have been asexual. Um, there's this one story. And anything, anything you listen to, watch about Hypatia, this story is going to come up. We have no idea if it's true, but it's baller. So this one student was like so in love with her. It would not quit following her around. Like, really kind of, like, stalking her. Just, like... That's when you got the police. <laughs> the vibe, creeper vibe, creeper vibe, 500. And she'd be like, no, 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 please leave me alone. I'm not interested. And he'd be like, I'm gonna wear you down. And so one day, she was just fucking fed up. And she reaches up her toga and pulls out, like, her, what we'd call, like, a, a maxi pad today. Oh, bitch. She pulls out her, like, rag that she has up her toga to, like, catch her period. And hands it to him. And she is just like, you love me? Oh, you think you love me? Do you love this? This is part of me. Is this what you love? Do you love me? Do you love my bloody vagina? No, because you just love the idea of me. You don't love the reality of me. So fuck off. I'm not fucking interested. I love this queen. This is an extreme method, but it (laughs) does get the point across. Right? The next time somebody hits on you in a bar, just pull out your bloody tampon and... Hey! Hey! Get the fuck out of here! You You might get kicked out of the bar, but we will think you're a hero, so... (laughs) We'll give you a shout-out. We'll we'll send you some merch. (laughs) 
Okay, so let's return to the religious politics of the time. You know what? I wanted to do a content warning here real quick. Um, if you have, like, religious trauma in your life, yeah, maybe just stop here and just, Hypatia was this awesome glass ceiling breaker, and that's the end of the story. Bye! Yay! <laughs> um, so if you're still with us, a breakdown of a few things. First of all, historically, Hypatia is classified as a pagan. I don't fucking know what that means for her. We don't, like... So she just didn't believe in the there were, things. There were three religions, basically, in Alexandria at the time. Christianity, Judaism, and paganism. So I think paganism is basically just a clump of everything that wasn't the other two religions. Right, non-Jewish. Non, Non-Abrahamic religions, yes. basically. Yeah. So, also, disclaimer, we don't want to hate Christians because I, we got some hate mail from uh, Christians. The and- only reason I want to bring this up, when we did the Saeed Al-Hura episode, there was this one person who signed in on several different, like, email addresses to give us bad reviews calling us Christian haters. In Saeed Al-Hura's episode, there were... But, I mean, they were the, they were. She was the protagonist. I mean, they were the antagonist. Isabella so. of Castile was not a perfect person. No. <laughs> yes, and so in this episode, y'all, my mom is a Christian. I know my family's Christian. We have probably the majority of the people that we love in our lives are Christian leaning. So do not come at us. But also in this story, the bad guy is a Christian. So, so it just happens to be history. And that just happens to be history. I love that. We should put that on the t-shirt. <laughs> so, Sorry, that just happens to be history. Uh, since the change to the Christian religion, officially each major town had a bishop installed. The bishop of Alexandria was this guy named Theophilius. Mm-hmm. And Theophilius loved Hypatia. And even though she wasn't a Christian, he promoted her as this ally, a friend, just to really help the Christians out officially as, you know, she's your friend too. She's a buddy. She's an ally. She's like... She's your girl. She loves all the religions. Mm -hmm. She's chill. And the two of them gelled for like 12 years. But then, sadly, Theophilius died. And then Patia is like, er, is the next bishop going to be cool? (laughs) Unfortunately, no. No, No. the next bishop was not cool. This new bishop is a guy named Cyril. I I fucking hate this man. He's so much. A bit of a dick. He's a bit of a dick. Yes. (laughs) Not fans of St. Cyril. No, he's a saint now, too, to put that... He's not a saint. No. Well, um, I mean, he, like, actually, he he's been canonized, but I do not care for him still. Uh, and he starts punishing anyone that supported his rival, which is not no. a really good way to make friends. Not yet. a good way to make friends. No. Like, um, <laughs> I'm just standing around being an asshole. And- so, yeah, her school's official stance was that, um... I don't think this Cyril guy is uh, super cool. He seems not, a bit of a bummer. Not super cash money. No. Uh, so around the same time, Cyril takes the stage. Orestes, the besties, is now the Roman prefect of Alexandria. I love Orestes, the besties. And, and prefect basically means like governor. Yeah. 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 So he's super baptized and becomes a Christian. I mean, you kind of had to since it was like the official religion. If you were like a state employee, you kind of had to become a Christian. Yeah, then. and super baptized. Yes. But he and Cyril butted heads a lot. Like, they were not friends. No. Like, let's just gloss over a lot of it. But, like, what you need to know is that these two powerful men hate each other. A lot. Mm-hmm. And Cyril knows that Orestes relies on Hypatia for that advice, that guidance, that learning. Because the two of them, they were like... She was his teacher. She was his... And she never mm-hmm. quit being his advisor. So Cyril starts casually mentioning to his monks and dudes, like, he had... I mean, he was the 
Bishop of Alexandria. He had a lot of people that listened to what he said. And he'd be, like, just kind of casually mentioning, like, I don't know, there's no other woman in this uh, country that anybody listens to, like, Orestes listens to Hypatia. Okay, I'm not saying she's a witch, but... Oh, no. I know. We had to bring the W word in this. I know. So, Cyril had led a very anti-Semitic campaign, which, uh, not officially Queen's not Podcast. Uh, official so. Queen's Podcast um, recommendation, don't be anti-Semitic. Don't be racist. Don't, don't be, be racist anti-Semitic. in general. Who cares? But um, Cyril didn't, he, yeah. He went a little extra and forced all the Jews out of the town. And that's not cash money. Um, and Bessie Orestes is like, um, but you do have authority to do that. You do not have the authority to do that, actually. Uh, like, no. do you have the authority? No. And, like, he was, Bessie's Orestes was, like, riding home to Rome being like, this guy is overstepping his bounds. Like, what the fuck? Um, Hypatia never spoke out against the bishop's views publicly. So we don't know, like, for sure what her exact feelings were. But being that she taught in, like, such an inclusive environment, we have to assume, um, you know, not pro-Cyril. Right. And one day, a supporter of Cyril set out to try to kill Arrestes. Not cool. Not cool, man. Yeah. He's just chilling, walking home, probably smoking a blunt. He was, sm- he was definitely smoking <laughs> a blunt. I definitely think I read that Tr- in some ancient text. Yeah. Trying to govern yeah. and be like, hey, Rastafaria. And this yeah. monk threw a stone at Arrestes' motherfucking head. And not only was the stone just, just not a regular stone. It was pointed. It um, must have been a just big old honking stone. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> because they said as soon as it hit his head, he was like immediately just, there was so much blood. People didn't know what to do oh, about Arrestes, it. Arrestes, I love you. And Arrestes pulled through. Like he may, I guess like the wound was actually superficial. And so he pulled through. And then he had the monk who, you know, tried to kill him, executed publicly. But not long after, Cyril had the monk's body brought to the church and told everybody, He's a martyr. He he just tried to die for the cause. And they're like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, mm. So he, a martyr means somebody that dies for their religion. So technically, this he just threw a for... rock at someone's head, and yes. that's murder. Yes. <laughs> And so the people of Alexandria were a bit like, huh, oh, I'm a fucking murder. Say that he's a martyr. A fucking murder. He tried to kill a government official. And, uh, wow. But huh. that that's what spread throughout the empire yes. is that Cyril had like taken this in this body of this martyr and just like the rumors. Blue. spread yeah and then sadly hypatia was never officially a part of that gig no she ended up being a part of that gig sadly and yeah it was not good why is this yeah cyril was spreading these rumors like we said earlier why is this woman the only woman that anyone listens to Ugh. No woman feeds information to powerful men like she does she obviously worships shade Shayton? Shayton. Shayton! <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're like, why? Why are people listening to this woman? She must be a witch. Because clearly, why else would a woman be listened to? Unless she, like, had a control over men with her magical witchy powers. Yeah. Obviously, she can't think. Right. she has a vagina. She has a vagina. How could she possibly have a vagina and think at the same and time? And do math. Ugh. She's a witch. <laughs> the thought that she might be a witch survived for like 200 years. Because like 200 years later, this Egyptian Catholic priest wrote this of her. And Nathan, I would love one of your dramatic readings. <clears throat> Queen's podcast theater. And in those days, they appeared in Alexandria. 
a female philosopher, <gasps> female, a pagan <gasps> named Hypatia, and she was devoted at all times to magic. And she beguiled many people through her satanic wiles. And the governor of the city honored her exceedingly, for she beguiled them through her magic. 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 (laughs) (laughs) That was a great reading, Nathan. That was fantastic. So, most believe that Orestes probably sent Hypatia a warning, being like, hey, yo, I, somebody threw a rock at me today, it nearly killed me, and like, I'm, and he was a baptized Christian. Like, read the room. Like, read the room, bitch, like, you're not a baptized Christian, and, and people are starting to whisper about you being a witch, like, stay home. And go to bed. Drink some wine. And have a good time. Do some math. And some magic. You love that shit. Just stay in. Just stay home. What's unclear is did Hypatia think that the whole thing was blown out of proportion? Or was she? Probably. Like, probably. <laughs> she was probably like, what? 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 Really? I'm a I witch mean, because I can put two and two together? Because people listen to me? LOL. I'm so witchy. Or was it like, I'm not going to let these radicals run my life. Uh, We don't know. But a patient didn't stay home and do math and think about planets. Um, (laughs) That sounds like, it sounds fun. It sounds boring. The math part sounds lame. But um, (laughs) the drinking wine and, you know, just thinking about planets sounds fun. But Hypatia, she was like, no, I'm going to live my normal life. And so she continued to go to the school that she taught at every day and teach her classes And this is where our story becomes a fucking bummer. Yay. Yay. (laughs) Hypatia is riding home from class one day in March, 4.15. And she would have been somewhere between like 45 and 65. Again, with the like not knowing her, like such a big gap. (laughs) So who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Her carriage is stopped. By group, and they're all dressed in black. Ooh. I've read one thing that said it was a dozen monks. I've read one thing that said it was a hundred monks. It doesn't matter. It was monks. She and, was outnumbered. Yeah, <laughs> and it, what happened next? We're just gonna. I I don't like. I don't it. like it. It's icky. That you can go and see videos on YouTube, other podcasts. And hear exactly what happened to her, um, but it's icky, and I don't like it. So we're gonna hit the high points or the low points. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> she she was pulled from her carriage, dragged to a church, and some retellings tell that she was given the chance to like kiss a cross and pledge her life to becoming a nun, and she refused. But Katie, if, if it was me, I would have been like, "Numb me up, bro." Yeah, nun. I'm a nun, bitches. Like, <laughs> the, again, I'm never gonna be a martyr because I am a huge coward. <laughs> like, <laughs> put me in that nunnery, son. Yeah, nun me up, bitch. Yes. <laughs> but she passed it up. She was like, no, I'm not. She's like, what? No, I'm not gonna do that. From there, she was brutally, brutally. It's- Brutally, it's brutally. nasty. It's just very brutal. Like, dear God, one of the worst executions I've ever read about. And then when they were done, they took the pieces of her body and burnt them outside of the city walls. Like, as a sign of, like, this is what we think of pagans, witches. <sighs> Problematic. No one was ever punished for her murder. Yeah, Orestes, not long after this, was like, fuck this job. Fuck you, (laughs) fuck you, fuck you. I'm out. Fuck you, I'm out. Yes, exactly. Can you blame him? No. He just saw his mentor be brutally executed. Yeah, like this 
mathematician, astronomer, scholar, philosopher. She was never involved in politics. Like, she wasn't, like, a government official. Avoided it. Yeah, and so for her to be executed in that manner, I don't blame him at all for being, like, a piece. I would, too. Though Um, he wasn't there at the time, most people do blame Cyril for this. Yeah, because he had the power to punish somebody for it. And he didn't. The murder was a huge scandal, but the worst thing that happened about it, besides, you know, all of it, (laughs) um, is that most people view her death as the beginning of the Dark Ages. Oh, because they didn't want to know math and philosophy and theology and... Exactly, because, like, philosophers, after, after her death, I mean, they still existed. But, like, so many of them fled the city, fled the empire, or just, like, did that Homer Simpson gif of just, like, like back back out. into the like, woods. Like, oh, my <laughs> Like, yes. So it became a time of don't question anything or you're going to get brutally murdered. Oh, uh, uh. And, yeah, a lot, a lot. Like, I feel like most historians now don't actually use the term... Um, dark ages they use like early middle ages or something like that but for a very very long time her death was viewed as the beginning of the dark ages which is very it's very noteworthy yeah right like you're you are a powerful female that had a lot of knowledge and the death of you caused the dark ages shifts a whole society i'll make it to walk yes (laughs) so the legacy she left behind First of all, some people believe her to be the inspiration for a Catholic saint, St. Catherine of Alexandria. Uh. Like I said, her death is often viewed as the beginning of the Dark Ages. All in all, she's mainly viewed as a very positive historical figure, unlike Cyril. Yeah, not I mean, he's a saint, much, but like he's still not usually viewed as like a positive figure in history. No. We don't have a lot of information on her life, like nothing in her own hand, none of her letters or anything remain. But But she was a badass bitch. Yes! And she had knowledge. She was such like a paragon of like, no, women can be thinkers. And god damn it, I just fucking love her. So let's raise a glass. Raise a glass. And cheers. It's a Hypatia. Cheers, bitches. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, if you want to hear something, just email us at queenshistorypodcast at gmail.com. And follow us on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We have a really great Facebook discussion group. We'd love to see you over there, too. And if you're so inclined, we do have a Patreon account if you need more Queen's content in your life. Yes, yes. (laughs) Thanks Thanks. for listening. Cheers, bitches.